Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushan Sutish and I am going to be your trainer for this Power Platform Fundamentals PL900 certification course. In this video, we are starting a brand new module, module 5. And the first lesson in module 5 is getting to know about Power BI. Let's have a quick look at the things what we are going to learn in this video. You will learn how to describe the business value and features of Power BI and we will see how Power BI works and looks from the user's perspective. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Microsoft Power BI is a collection of software services, apps and connectors that work together to turn your unrelated sources of data into coherent, visually immersive and interactive insights. Whether your data is a simple Microsoft Excel workbook or a collection of cloud-based and on-premises hybrid data warehouses, Power BI lets you easily connect to your data sources, clean and model your data without affecting the underlying source. Visualize what's important and share that with anyone or everyone you want. So what are the parts of Power BI? Power BI consists of a Microsoft Windows desktop application called Power BI Desktop, an online SaaS service called Power BI service and mobile Power BI app that are available on phones and tablets. Let's understand Power BI concepts. The major building blocks of Power BI are data sets, reports and dashboards. They are all categorized into workspaces and they are created on capacities. So let's understand what is capacities. Capacities are a core Power BI concept representing a set of resources used to host and deliver your Power BI content. Capacities are either shared or dedicated. A shared capacity is shared with other Microsoft customers, while a dedicated capacity is fully committed to a single customer. And dedicated capacities require a subscription. By default, workspaces are created on a shared capacity. Then we have workspaces. Workspaces are containers for dashboards, reports, data sets, and data flow in Power BI. There are two types of workspaces, My Workspace and Workspaces. So what is My Workspace? My Workspace is the personal workspace for any Power BI customer to work with your own content. Only you have access to My Workspace. You can share dashboards and reports from My Workspace. If you want to collaborate on dashboards and reports or create an app, then you want to work in a workspace. The second scenario is workspaces. Workspaces are used to collaborate and share content with colleagues. You can add colleagues to your workspaces and collaborate on dashboards, reports and datasets. With one exception, all workspace members need a Power BI Pro licenses. And workspaces are also the place where you can create, publish and manage apps for your organization. So think of workspace as staging areas and containers for the content that will make your Power BI app. The next concept we need to understand is data sets. A data set is a collection of data that you import or connect to. Power BI lets you connect to and import all sort of data sets and bring all of it together in one place. Dataset can also source data from data flows. And datasets are associated with workspaces and a single dataset can be part of many workspaces. When you open a workspace, the associate datasets are listed under the datasets tab. Each list of dataset represents a single source of data. For example, an Excel workbook on OneDrive. Data sets added by one workspace member are available to other workspace member with an admin, member or a contributor role. The next concept we need to understand is about shared data sets. Business intelligence is a collaborative activity. It's important to establish standardized data set that can be the one source of truth. Discovering and reusing those standardized data sets is key. When expert data modelers in your organization create and share optimized data sets, report creators can start with those data sets to build accurate reports. 
Your organization can have consistent data for making decisions and a healthy data culture. The fifth concept you need to learn about is about reports. A Power BI report is one or more pages of visualizations such as line charts, maps, and tree maps. Visualizations are also called visuals. You can create a report from scratch within Power BI, import them with dashboards that your colleagues share with you, or Power BI can create them when you connect to data sets from Excel, Power BI desktop, databases, and SaaS applications. For example, when you connect to an Excel workbook that contains Power View sheets, Power BI creates a report based on those sheets. And when you connect to a SaaS application, Power BI imports a pre-built report. And the last concept is about dashboards. A dashboard is something you create in Power BI service or something a colleague creates in Power BI service and shares with you. It is a single canvas that contains zero or more tiles and widgets. Each tile pinned from a report or from a Q&A displays a single visualization that was created from a data set and pinned to the dashboard. Entire report page can also be pinned to a dashboard as a single tile. So let's understand what is a template apps. The new Power BI template apps enable Power BI partners to build Power BI apps with little or no coding and deploy them to any Power BI customer. As a Power BI partner, you can create a set of out-of-the-box content for your customer and publish it yourself. You can build template apps that allow your customers to connect within their own account. As domain experts, they can unlock the data in a way that is easy for their business users to consume. So now let me show you all the things what we have learned in the previous slide. So now I'm on my Power BI portal. On the left hand side, you can see workspaces. As we learned, under workspaces, you can either create your own workspace or you can see your workspaces. So I'm gonna click on an existing workspace. If you remember, we talked about workspaces are containers for dashboards, reports, data sets and data flows in Power BI. And within workspaces, we have data sets. So you can click on data sets and data flows to find out the data sets available. Then we have these reports. So let me click on this sales report. So when you interact with the report, there are two ways we can do it. One is by reading view and another one is by editing view. When you open a report, it by default open in a reading view. And based on your permission level, you can click on edit. If you have sufficient permissions, you can modify and manipulate the data as well. So within the report, you can navigate around to different tabs, which shows different reports based on the customization and the dashboard we have created. And templates apps can be found under apps. You can click on get apps. You can search for all the apps here, or you can click on template app. And I'm gonna search for GitHub. Select the template app which you would like to add and click on get it now and click on install. And when the installation finishes successfully and a notification tells you that your app is now ready. Now you can take the data and connect to another source or explore sample data as well. Let's understand Power BI data modeling and visualizations. When you launch Power BI desktop, the getting started dialog box will appear and which provides useful link to forums, blogs, and introductory videos. In Power BI Desktop, you will begin to build reports in Reports View, and you will be working on these following five main areas. Ribbon, Report View or Canvas, Page Tabs, Visualization Pane, and Fields Pane. The ribbon displays common tasks that are associated with reports and visualizations. The Report View or Canvas is where visualizations are created and arranged. There are two things we need to remember. There is data view and model view. Data view allows you to view all the data available in your report. And model view allows you to visually set the relationship between tables or elements. Then we have page tabs. This is located along the bottom of the page. This area is where you would select or add a report page. The visualization pane is where you can change visualizations, customize colors or axis, apply filters, drag fields and more. 
and the fields pane is where query elements and filters can be dragged into the reports view or dragged to the filters area of the visualization pane. Let's understand how to filter the data with Power BI. Data is the core of Power BI. As you explore reports, each visual draws its underlying data from sources that often contain far more data than you need. Power BI offers several ways to filter and highlight reports. Knowing how to filter data is the key to finding the right information. The four types of filters are report, page, visual, and drill through. Report applies to all pages in the report, and page applies to all visuals in the current report page, and visual applies to a single visual or a report page. You only see visual level filters if you have selected a visual or report canvas. Sometimes your data might contain extra data or have data in the wrong format. So Power BI Desktop includes the Power Query Editor tool, which can help you shape and transform data so that it's ready for your models and visualizations. While Power BI can import your data from almost any source, its visualization and modeling tools work best with columnar data. Sometimes your data won't be formatted in simple columns, which is often the case with Excel spreadsheets. So how can you clean the data? Fortunately, Power BI Query Editor has tools to help you quickly transform multiple column tables into data sets that you can use. So how can you work with aggregates in Power BI service? For that, first you need to understand what is aggregate. Sometimes you want to mathematically combine values in your data. The mathematical operation can be sum, average, maximum, count, and so on. When you combine values in your data, it's called aggregating. The result of that mathematical operation is an aggregate. And what are the ways to aggregate your data? So you have options like do not summarize, sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, uh, standard deviation, variance, median, etc. To give you an example, if you choose do not summarize option, Power BI treats each value in that field separately and doesn't summarize them. Use this option if you have a numeric ID column that the survey shouldn't sum. And the sum adds all values in that field up. Okay, let's understand the security and administration. Similar to any Microsoft services, Power BI is built on Azure. So this is Microsoft cloud computing infrastructure and platform, which ensures the same level of security for Power BI as other Microsoft services. Users sign in with their credentials held in the Azure Active Directory and control the level of sharing of every report, data, and dashboard, whether recipients can edit or only view items. What about administration? Power BI administration is the management of Power BI tenant, including the configuration of governance, policies, user monitoring, and provisioning of licenses, capacities, and organizational resources. All right, so that concludes this lesson. In the next video, we're going to learn how to build a simple dashboard with Power BI. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.